flow is the is the spirit of kanban so when it comes to kanban what matters is you are trying to actually focus on the flow trying to make sure that you are breaking the whole set of tasks the stories requirements um things to do activities whatever it is the work itself any kind of work could actually be broken down further and further in terms of of the of the flow so for example here if you look at the left side you won't have a clue where is it that that we are now at the moment how much of work is left to do what should be done and what is still to be done we don't have any clue what is the status we don't have any clue about it it's just a laundry list of items there whereas if you look on the right side it still is is the same to be honest it's not really you're trying to refine it it's like a, a backlog that you have got in, in in scrum we discussed how product backlog could actually kind of be a refined groomed and then prioritized and 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 shortlisted but still you're not you have got a mosco prioritization for example the must have should have could have and will not have this time we have had a look at that in detail last time it still is not giving you the uh, information about where we are what is the work to be still to be done how much of it is left and how much time do we have nothing is actually been been you know conveyed with this kind of refinement of the of the list so what do we need there is basically what is lacking here is the flow where is the flow there's no flow there's no uh, there's no idea of in terms of where we're starting where where, where do we need to go and uh, how are we progressing simple thing so that if you as we discussed earlier in some of the examples before if i want to start from london to brighton um in a car i have have got a clear um destination and i've got a starting point which is london and i've got to go to brighton which is a destination and i'm going by car and i've got this kind of okay i've got to have at least what for example 100 miles journey so within the 100 mile journey it might take roughly one and a half hour and this is what i need to do this is where i can actually take the pit stops for uh, breakfast lunch whatever one or two pit stops in between so there is a plan there there is some kind of workflow so you can actually kind of see when you put on your sat nav the satellite navigation or tom tom or any of this garmin it clearly says how much of distance have you completed and how much more is still um, you know pending how many you know 50 miles more to reach to the destination so you know there is a clear progression in terms of your journey where you started and we are reaching and then how you're going what is the speed that you're going and how much um, you know how much more time that you're going to take which is completely lacking in this kind of a structuring of work that you are seeing now but with kanban you can try and overcome that so basically what you try and do is you to actually take only the most important most urgent things which is what is the must and shoulds and then you try and put that into the um this the sprint backlog so essentially all the things that are below the um the red line will actually be dropped off because they're not urgent they're not important so obviously those are from the business priority point of view they get dropped and then the rest of the items for example it could be the must and should so you potentially have about 20 items that that you pick up from this list and that goes into the um what we call as a plan but then it's not really the backlog yet because the team would then have a look they would do the estimation and then they would come up with some kind of an indication in terms of okay this out of this 20 items technical feasibility point of view we can try and do 12 of these so the 12 items would go into the sprint backlog and now you're going to track the sprint backlog right so here you can actually get to see the work item is what here for example this is the this is work item could be a requirement it could be a user story it can be a defect it can be a change request or improvement so anything it can be a technical task uh, that has to be done by a database administrator irrespective of the type of the task everything in a sprint in in a in a agile development life cycle could be tracked and could be put in a flow and that's the beauty of kanban board so you actually say that okay these are all the ideas these are all the things that need to be done and then these are some of the proposals and then you say okay out of these we have got some of them we've got about 10 15 12 and then we have got out of those some of them are in the development some of them in acceptance testing some of them are complete they're done they're being deployed as we talk and then there is that sense of okay this that means that this is a work in progress for this one for this current sprint 
these are the items that we need to focus. What is happening there? We are trying to limit the work in progress. So you're not bothered about all the hundred other things that have come into your way, that have got into your backlog. What is important is that 12 items that you need to finish by the end of the sprint, the time box. So see here, Kanban is not actually prescribing a time box. Kanban doesn't have a time box, but then the beauty of Kanban that it, when it is working with some other agile methodology like Scrum is that it actually beautifully fits in, in there because you can structure the work. You can see the flow, you can see where it is, what kind of uh, uh, work is involved, what is, what is still to be done, how much of it is done. In fact, you can go to the next extent where you can actually see which team members have done what. So it's not just about one person doing this. If there are dependencies, we can easily track that. 